Here's Pittsburgh. It's our home and it's a great American city. We thought you would like to know something about our city because two people from Dunfermline, Scotland had a huge impact on Pittsburgh. General John Forbes, who was born in Dunfermline around 1709, founded and named Pittsburgh in 1758. Andrew Carnegie, born in Dunfermline, came to Pittsburgh in 1848 at the age of 12, 90 years after General John Forbes named the city. He came with his parents and his younger brother Thomas. Andrew Carnegie was very instrumental in creating the steel industry that made Pittsburgh world famous. General John Forbes' name lives on in Pittsburgh today because there is a major avenue named for him. We know the name of Andrew Carnegie because he donated his money to create museums, libraries, and even a university that are all very important in the life of Pittsburgh today. We'd like to show you a few of the places in Pittsburgh today that remind us of General John Forbes and Andrew Carnegie. First, let's go to the Pittsburgh Point where the three rivers meet to see what is left of the fort that General John Forbes ordered to be built in 1758. The Fort Pitt Blockhouse, built in 1764, is the only original part of Fort Pitt that has survived to this day. The blockhouse has five sides and is made of brick, timber, and stone. Both floors of the blockhouse have openings called gun loops, through which the soldiers could fire their weapons at anyone trying to attack. No one ever attacked, so in time, the blockhouse was adapted to house a private residence and later apartments. In 1894, it was restored and a year later opened as a museum. The blockhouse is celebrating its 250th anniversary this year in 2014. The blockhouse is the oldest building that we have in the city of Pittsburgh. So when you're driving through the city with parents or with your family, and you're looking at all these buildings in the city of Pittsburgh, just remember that this little one that you're sitting in right now is the oldest one. This was built in 1764. Now that's before the United States was created, for the American Revolution, so just think about that. This building is older than our country. It's been standing in this same spot. It's never been moved. It's been standing here for 250 years. That's a pretty long time. And most of it is still original. Over half of the blockhouse is still from 1764. In 1969, the one bastion of the five side of Fort Pitt was rebuilt to house the Fort Pitt Museum. Inside the museum, there is a painting of John Forbes writing a letter informing Sir William Pitt, the elder that Pittsburgh was named for. Forbes was extremely ill at the time and is shown on a stretcher. The black and gold colors and logo of Pittsburgh are based on the family coat of arms of Sir William Pitt, the elder. Pitt never visited Pittsburgh, but he lived for 20 years knowing that the frontier town name for him was growing just beyond the walls of Fort Pitt. People living here adopted the English language and customs. Pittsburgh grew from being a gateway to the West to the workshop of the world. Today, Forbes and Carnegie are most closely connected in Pittsburgh's Oakland neighborhood, where the Carnegie Museums of Pittsburgh and Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh are located at 4400 Forbes Avenue. In 1890, Andrew Carnegie offered the city of Pittsburgh $1 million to build a cultural palace for the people, containing an art gallery, museum of natural history, concert hall, and library. The Carnegie Library in Oakland is still free to the people today. An admission donation is requested if you go to see the Carnegie Museum of Natural History, including the dinosaurs, Carnegie Museum of Art, or a concert hall where Andrew Carnegie is seated on the throne. The Carnegie Library Southside Branch is one of 20 branch libraries located in the city neighborhoods. The Southside Branch was opened in 1909. The building has been renovated recently. Carnegie system of branch libraries first started here in Pittsburgh. Let's explore the university that bears the name of Andrew Carnegie and is now called Carnegie Mellon University. Founded in 1900 by Andrew Carnegie and first called Carnegie Technical Schools, this is where young men came to learn how to be engineers, machinists, and architects, among many other professions, and young women came to learn bookkeeping, technical dressmaking, and household arts, among other subjects. Carnegie Mellon University is full of amazing art and architecture. It's a fascinating place to explore. The College of Fine Arts shows famous places from around the world in fantastic murals. 
and it has five niches carved to show different architectural styles. You can even find a bagpiper. There is a huge charcoal mural on the second floor of the University Center that really brings the history of Pittsburgh to life. Douglas Cooper, who teaches at CMU, created this mural in 1995 and 1996. You can see Andrew Carnegie still works in Homestead, once located just beyond the city of Pittsburgh. It was one of the most famous steel mills in the world, but was closed in 1986. You can also see Forbes Field, named for General John Forbes. Carnegie Mellon's Kilty Band performed at Fort Field for the first time on Andrew Carnegie's birthday on November 25, 1922, when CMU was playing football against Notre Dame. The Pittsburgh Pirates baseball team played at Fort Field from 1909 until 1971, when the stadium was demolished. Three separate sections of the mural illustrate how General John Forbes' Pittsburgh grew into Andrew Carnegie's Workshop of the World and finally into livable, beautiful, and significant 21st century American city that we know today. So much of Pittsburgh's unique character and life can be seen in his this historic places we continue to care for and use today. Now that we've shown you a few sites in Pittsburgh, we can talk more about the city and answer whatever questions you have. We hope that you can visit one day.